What could I be looking at here? This is a wheel arch, but where's the wheel? Oh, there it is, already tucked behind. <laughs> That's the front, the back's even worse. Let's go to the back. Look at that, look how far back that is. All right, so how are we gonna sort that out? These bad boys. So we've got some wheel spaces, hub centric, H&R quality. Um, that's gonna bring the wheels out this way. Um, front and back. I'm gonna show you how to measure them, see, see how you can choose what you, you wanna use. Um, and uh, I'll take you through about that thought process of why I chose the width I have and why I chose H&R. Um, but before I do that, I just want to say the differences between the widening the track and there in it. Hello, little Mika. <laughs> oh. So, um, so basically, I, I, I race go karts as well. Um, go karts are they don't have suspension, they don't have the independent suspension, but. When you widen and narrow the track, you change the characteristics and grip massively. And it's not necessarily what you may think it is. Okay, so on the front of a go-kart, if you widen the track, you're, you're increasing the, uh, the grip of the front end of the axle, uh, the chassis. So, so your turning capability is, is strengthened. You widen the stance. But on the rear, the wider you go, the slippier it actually gets. And that's not exactly what we all think it could be. But, but basically, if I, if I uh, get this a, a second. So if, if that's your rear axle, when you go around the corner, you've got the body roll, right? That will, that will come up like that. If you widen it, it gets longer. You think about the, the, the distance and height from the road to that chassis. The longer it is, the higher the distance. So that means your back wheel will start losing weight and traction before uh, before what it would be if it was a, a narrow track. So you don't want to go too wide. The wider you go, the less traction you actually end up getting. So you have to be really careful with how far you go, guys. Now, uh, you're gonna say, yep, solid rear axle on a, on a go-kart, yes. And, and that's one reason why we want to lift that rear, rear wheel off, so we can go around the corner quicker. Here you've got independent rear suspension, which shouldn't make much difference, but you've got an anti-row bar uh, and uh, strut brace in the back, linking them together. So when, we, when one wheel is affected, the other one does get affected as well. So it has a slight uh, change. So let's, let's, let's uh, measure these up and see what, what we're getting. Right. Right, I'm gonna carefully put that there to make sure I don't scratch my wheel arch. In line with the center of the wheel. What I'm going to do is just use this ruler and see how far I need to go in, right? So, so if I go to the, the widest point of the tyre, I've got like 21 mil. Um, so, remember, that's there, right? Here, it's at 23 mil, I think. So, if I widen it out to the edge of that, you've got to be careful how much gap you've got here. So if you lower the car a lot, you just gotta remember this edge will be on the outside of there, not the inside. And there is a little bit of a, I'd say around about five mil. So really, if you want, you want the wheel to go up inside, you're only gonna want about 15 mil uh, spacer on there. But I've actually opted to go a little bit wider. You're probably thinking, why, you're crazy. So I've gone for 20 mil, which will bring it in line with that front edge. Um, I want the wider stance of the front, but I'm also not going to be lowering the car down to that level. If you go to, for something like the H&R springs or the, or the media gallery springs, where it's even lower, I think you will get severe rubbing. Um, so be careful. Um, so I think the H&R springs are 35 mil, I think, at the front. So I think it's just too low. But we know that these the suspension on this is, is nice and stiff, so that shouldn't be getting that much travel, okay? And I want to see what this looks like before I start lowering the car. So that's the front anyway. Let's have a look at the rear. So let's look at the back, see what we got. So again, the widest part of the tire is actually showing around about 35 mil. 
32, 33 mil there, 34, roughly around there. But I want to actually go slightly wider on my rear tires, which is going to bring them out slightly. So I don't want to go too far. So 30 mil would be the maximum you'd ever want to go. But remember what I said about losing that rear grip? I'm going to go 25 on the back, just to stay a little bit more conservative. All right, so uh, why H&R? Okay, there's a few reasons, okay? So, so let me just go through the choice. I've gone for a hub-centric uh, style spacer, which is bolt-on. Um, now, the reason why it's hub-centric, if you don't have hub-centric uh, spacers and you just have these ones that are, are just flat, I remember having some spacers on, on my Performance Ford uh, quite a while ago, and when it went on the dyno, the rear wheels were actually doing that, right? <laughs> Uh, and if you, when you go over a certain speed, it started. You could feel the wobble, and you know. So, so, and that's because that wheel isn't centralised on that hub. Okay. So, so with these, can I just open them up? Should have unpacked them before, shouldn't I? <laughs> yeah. So these, I've got this ridge on there, and your and your wheel will go directly onto that and, and locate onto that, and that mimics the same as what's on your hub. So that'd be what, what's there at the moment. This would be like the rear of the wheel. It would go on and it fits perfectly together. Okay. So, so that's why I'm going for a hub centric style spacer. I'm going for 20 mil rather than 15, like I said, because one of the reasons is the, uh, your, your studs from your, your hub at the moment will, will be sticking out past this. Uh, luckily, uh, on the mo majority of the Jag wheels, there's a space in the recess of the back of the wheel which allows those studs to go into them. But if you have a 15mm spacer, sometimes you've got to chop the end of your studs off. And I think I can't be bothered to do that. So I'm going to play safe, go for the 20mm, which is what I kind of want anyway, be nice and flush. And, uh, and they'll go in there. So again, I know you can buy. Uh, hub centric bolt on wheel spaces like this on eBay and other places. So, why HR? Right, so HR, amazing quality, German made. I, I've got a car that's pushing out around 600 brake horsepower, and I will be increasing that to around about 650 brake horsepower soon, hopefully. Um, massive amounts of torque, all that's going through the rear wheels, which will be held on by one of these. <laughs> If this is not very good quality, that's the breaking point, right? And I don't want my wheel to fall off, which can happen, which I'll show you a video right now. And how, how cool did he look, right? You don't want that to happen. You don't want your wheel flying off somewhere, being dangerous around other people's cars. And you don't want to be going down a road, around a corner, and have your, have your wheel fall off. It's, it's just, it's not worth the risk. Um, so I thought I'd pay for high quality that I know is not going to have any fractures in it or anything, or, or, or under, under quality sort of materials being used. But these studs here have actually got um, H&R stamped into the back of them uh, with 1009, which is the which is the grade of steel that they use, which is not automotive grade. So you know that that stud is not going to be shearing off. That stud will be exactly the same as the stud that's on your car. And you need that quality. If you have a, a, a lower quality, then you're putting that, that weak link of the chain in your, in your system. You don't want that. So I thought, I'm playing it safe. I want my car to be safe when I'm in it. And I don't want to be going around a corner fast and thinking, Oh, would it hold out? Would it hold out? I don't want that in the back of my mind. If you have something in the back of your mind like that, you're not concentrating. So I thought, pay a little bit extra, get some really good quality parts. And I know that sounds strange for me, right? Because I'm always trying to save money, but there's times to save money and there's times to buy quality. So anyway, let's fit these suckers on the car. Get in there. I'm going to order some new nuts because they're not it's not looking the greatest. They're starting to uh, to wear a little bit on the edges. I don't want them to to round off. So I'm going to order some new ones. Not for today, but soon. All right, Let's get this up. Oh. 
Well, they're there, so they've got something to sit on. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so um, good thing to do is you've got to make sure you get all this really, really clean. So you've got to wire brush this off. Luckily, that my brake discs are fairly new. Well, they're about a year and a half old. Good. So it's just cleaning this off, making sure these are nice and clean, and also make sure all this is really clean. You don't want anything to just have the wheel going around. So here is the, the recesses that the, these are going to. You can pop these on. See what I mean? They poke out a little bit. Let me just get my ruler. They're poking out by about 11 mil. Just gonna check in there what I've got. I have about 14 mil. So I have three mil clearance in the middle. That's close. Yeah, but if I had a 15 mil, I'd be having to take two mil off there. True. That's why I went for 20. <laughs> okay? Makes sense. Because <laughs> the last thing I want to be doing is grinding the end, ends of these off. Oh, What's the point? Oh yeah. This way I can take those off, put it back to standard straight away, without having to grind off ends of uh, ends of studs. Anyway, let's do some cleaning. That mason face, you've got to make it make sure it's really really nice. Spend some time, may even get some emery paper on there. Let's see, say, you know, I get. The missus said I could probably get anal a bit later. <laughs> <laughs> Can you, babe? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, quite big compared to my car. Mini Jag. <laughs> I think we should swap wheels maybe. Do you want to give it a go? I think that feeling is big. Uh, I've got the wrong number of studs. Oh, your wheel is going. <laughs> quick, quick, <laughs> quick. <laughs> Cleaning up the studs as well. Uh, I've noticed someone, the person that put these on before, used uh, uh, copper grease behind the wheel, um, which is fine because you're trying to make sure the wheel doesn't stick. Uh, but I like to use uh, silicon instead because uh, copper grease can can form in blobs and you can't get it flat, so that could cause you some imbalance. So I like to use some silicon spray. This isn't the normal stuff I'd use, but. So try nice not to get it onto your uh, disc. Now okay. that that would just form a little barrier so they don't stick together and corrode together. Okay. So then it just be normally the silicon spray would be white, which would be a uh, let you put on your um, your door hinges and stuff like that. Um, but I've run out of that, so I'm just going to use this over silicon spray. All right, now here's the nice low profile nuts that came with the HR spacers. Oh, so I'm putting these on. Now these get torqued up to 130 newton meters, the same as your wheel nuts. I think Jaguar actually spec it at 127 newton meters, but when you look at the, the actual spec for this size thread and this material, it's actually 130 newton meters, so I don't know why they did it slightly lower. And here's the other good, important bit of information I'm going to tell you. So the torque of these nuts is a rotational torque, okay? And um, as you tighten them up, this taper will, will push this spacer, you align it perfectly, then push the spacer with a clamping force into that. So your torque should be relative to your clamping force. But 
if you if you haven't cleaned these threads and they're they're mucky or they're deformed or anything like that and they and they don't spin easily like that when you achieve 130 newton meters you haven't achieved the same clamping force as what is actually desired now i'm an aviation engineer so i might be getting a little bit anal maybe a bit more later obviously <laughs> <laughs> but with with stress of materials okay if you tighten it up to 130 thinking it is tight because you haven't cleaned it and you get a little bit of movement it won't be this much but even if you get a little tiny bit on right that causes fracture points so any movement like that you'll end up breaking these studs so you're going to make sure that when you're applying 100, 130 new meters that's actually all going into that clamping force rather than the resistance of that nut uh, turning right if, if that's hard to turn some of that torque is being being eaten up by by trying to turn it not the clamping force now that's actually called a prevailing torque so you so if that's the case you actually actually put on like 140 or 150 newton meters to achieve the equivalent of 130. so make sure make sure they they spin nice and easy otherwise your your torque won't be your clamping force won't be achieved Okay, little tip for you. So I'm just tightening them up, getting them there into position with uh, the ratchet. Not tightening them up. Okay. Just make sure each one is done. 19 mil socket. All right, so once I get all those nipped up, There's a little warning here saying they're not suitable for steel rims. I don't think any Jaguar XFR or XF has got steel rims. Should we remove that? I'm going to remove that in a second. But obviously you get your torque wrench. Set it to 130 newton meters. And then lock it off. Don't know how accurate this is because it was from Aldi. But there you go. It's better than just doing it by hand. Because you ain't got a clue what you're doing. Right, so I may need, let's see how we go, I may need to, uh, I'm just going to get it close. I may need to put like a lever bar in here to stop it from rotating. So, <laughs> this won't work, to go in there very easy because it's nice and round, but just thought of a <laughs> stupid thing, right? Brake pads are designed to stop these from moving around. So I'm going to get you in the car to put your foot on the brake whilst I talk these up. Okay, okay. Alright, so there'll be no video for this bit. <laughs> Sorry guys. <laughs> Alright, let's get it done. So time to put this on. I always find it easier to put wheels on if I use my feet. I'll rest it and hold it like that so it's up in, up in the air. Line it up. Then pull it on. I've seen this stick out quite a lot. <laughs> you see what it's like when we put them on and lower down. Where's that wheel now? There it is. There you see it. There you don't. See it's perfectly in line. Nice. Same on this side. Just gotta do these backs now. Okay, this one is before. Then we go around to this side. Sorry about the noise, guys. This is after.
Do you know, I don't know, I wouldn't want to go any further than that. That's, for me, that's almost looking slightly too far. I'll put the other one on, take it for a drive and see how it settles. Because it might be from where I just dropped the jack, but we'll see. All right, so, as you see, it's basically exactly where I thought it was going to be. It's right in line, which is good. Let's have a look at the back one. Sorry about the noise, guys. The back one, just like I said, is going to be slightly inboard slightly by about seven mil to the edge of this tire. Um, but the other side looks a little bit more proud than that. So let's have a little, little, little look. There you go. Slightly more like six <laughs> mil further out. Mm. So I don't know why. Obviously, um, obviously they're not like millimeter by millimeter accurate. But but looking at this side, they it almost looks like it's too far out because it's basically in line like the front ones. But when you look at it coming back. Looks a little, a little too wide for me. So I think 20 front, 20 back is more than adequate. Right, let's see how it feels. Feels different driving it slightly. I just went out for a, a little go around the block quickly uh, to settle the suspension. And when you're steering, it kind of feels like there's little there's little peak points. Instead of it just being smooth, it kind of almost feels like there's a there's a corner. It's really strange. It might be it might be the uh, might might just be my head, but I, I know my car. I know what it feels like, and it does feel slightly different. But I'll, I'll keep an eye on it and I'll, I'll report back. But let's um let's do a recap. Twenty five on the rear, twenty on the front, twenty on the foot. The front looks perfect. The rear slightly wide. So, verdicts on the H&R uh, wheel spaces, very, very good quality. Every single, every single nut went on really smoothly. The threads on those, those studs are, are perfect, so can't fault them for their quality at all. Um, they are one of the most expensive ones, but that's what you, that's when you, what you pay for it, is the quality. Um, I bought these from Euro Car Parts. Uh, a few of you are probably thinking, Oh, that's why they were so expensive, right? Euro car parts do some really good deals. Uh, so watch out for their 40% their off or weekend uh, percentages. And, and I bought these on a really good deal. Um, and they had to order them in, especially from Germany, because you didn't have this size in stock. But still got the deal. Um, but yeah, fair play. You know, they, they, did, they did a great job getting these. Um, I'm glad I went for these ones. Uh, I, look, I was looking on eBay, where do I get them from? Which ones do I get? I'm glad I chose H&R because of the quality and price was spectacular for, for it. And uh, yeah, there's no stickers in the box though, so I can't, can't advertise I got them. <laughs> so I'll do it here. H&R, get them. So I'm going for a little test drive and uh, like I said, when I do this, I can almost feel like a, it's a little bit more responsive for some reason. <laughs> On the full rotation, it almost feels like there's a slight cornering ability that's just a little bit sharper than before. It's very strange, but let me just... Uh, She does feel a little tiny bit more on, on the corner. Yeah, it does a little bit, tiny bit, tiny bit. Mm. Oh, nice Bentley. <laughs> right, so remember, oh wow, I actually did a wiggle um, 
before when I was looking at was, was that a Ferrari? Or was that a McLaren? Hang on a minute. <laughs> it's a Ferrari. Testarossa. Nice. Right, so yeah, I did a, a little wiggle before when I was looking at the Lauren Macar and it just felt normal, right? So basically I'm just going to turn the wheel. <laughs> Still, it's pretty flat. So I'm just going to do the same thing now. And actually, it's a lot more violent on the turn. You're telling me. <laughs> it's a lot more violent. <laughs> And that's what I mean by the the outside edge feeling of when you turn. You, it feels like you're on a corner of something rather than rolling over. It's yeah. I didn't think it would make that much difference, but wow. Even I can feel it, and I'm a passenger. <laughs> it, it really is. Just I'm not even doing it. It's just like whoa. <laughs> Really hit the it does feel different, massively different. Didn't didn't think it didn't think it would make that much difference. I know in the go kart when you <laughs> if you if you went out by 50 mil on a go kart, you'd basically spin off the track. <laughs> it, it's it's so different, it's so different handling. So I didn't think by um, by doing a 50 mil rear track on this and 40 mil on the front because because obviously a car is wider than the go-kart but in saying that go-kart's not that much not that much thinner than this but yeah it's probably probably 60 percent of the width of this maybe 70 percent but i wouldn't have thought you would have found the difference like that but yeah fair play okay anyway yeah give them a go guys uh, look at the uh the stance of the wheels they seem a lot, well, it's only an inch, <laughs> inch over side, but it just seems wider. You can, you can tell. <laughs>